Simon, hi, Duncan from PA here. Hello. Just uh, morning, Duncan. Hi. Ben Youngs wins his hundredth cap tomorrow. Just for, since you've been with England during this this year, what what's been your impression of him? His appetite to keep on getting better. I mean, you're talking about a player that's been involved with England uh, for for so many years, and he's really driving the standards. And he's a a brilliant team person. He really does care about the team and the people in it. Uh, and the way he approaches his game to try and get better every single day is a real role model um, uh, for so many young players in our team as well. So, so impressed by him. So impressed. Sure. As, as a player, how do you describe his game? What's his strengths? Uh, very, very instinctive. You know, when, uh, uh, when Ben is playing uh, with the feel of the game and, um, and his running game comes in, he's spotting gaps and he's playing off the speed of the ball. I think it's very few as, as, as good as him. Uh, and he's a very, very strong leader of the forward pack as well. How he cajoles them, moves people around the field. Wonderful feel for that as well. So he's definitely a player that is very instinctive and has a wonderful feel for the game. So he's still only 31. How much more would you say he has to give at this level? Oh, and that's the most exciting thing. It's about what he's achieved so far and how much more he can still add to his game as the game becomes even more uh, faster potentially uh, and more unstructured on occasions than someone like a Ben who, like I said, feels the game. This can really be an exciting period for him. And he's got the appetite to get better. You can still see that in, tra in training, pushing himself, pushing others. So yeah, there's many more caps, I think, in there and further steps in his game, which is really exciting for both him and England. Thank you. Cheers. Uh, yeah, hi Simon. Um, just fascinated to know about the approach tomorrow. Um, I guess as the attack coach, it's probably like having the keys to the sweet shop uh, when you know you've got the score tries and win by points. And just I know you know the traditional line is that you've got to win the game first, but you've got to do more than that. You know that, and I think maybe 2015 was the last time we had this sort of Super Saturday finale. And um, just, just just wondering how. It changes for you, and maybe do you have a slightly, you know, more license uh, when you know you've got to chase down tries? Well, I don't think it's about having more of a license. It's still understanding how you want the game to play, and that does very much start always with England with setting the tone. And that first part of the game is is critical for us in terms of setting the tone. And we, you have to respect a very talented, um, uh, talented Italian team who will be going out there to give absolutely everything and have shown in their past games, just how exciting a team they can be as well. So setting the tone is very, very important for us. Um, and then once that tone has been set, then we can grow and, uh, and, and play and play the style of rugby that we re really want to. Um, I guess as well, that because the, the last game, we are the second game, you know, it's very much focusing on ourselves. We, don't, we have no crystal ball as to what the score lines could be later on. So it is about us very much focusing about what we can do in the first 20 minutes, building that platform, and then pushing on. And I mean, I don't know whether you've looked at scenarios where you make decisions about going for, for tries. And, um, you know, I think 2015, I think Joe Schmidt said the Ireland team practiced specifically to get a lead of a margin of victory by 15 points. I just wondered, do you go to that specific detail? No, we, we, we wouldn't go to the specific numbers, but of course, we're always trying to grow this team, um, not just for now, but also for the future in terms of how it can be adaptable, how it can make its decisions in the game itself, the players themselves, and certain scenarios. We're always looking at those areas. And this is another one of those areas. Do we need to score certain more, more points? Can we try and increase that point scoring towards the end of the game? That's no difference what we do every single week. So it's, um, it's a great opportunity for us as a team and a programme to keep on learning and adapting and take the next step forward in this journey. Jim, can we come to you next, please? Morning, Simon. Hi. Um, Morning. Just on the same theme, just, just looking at England's last few results against Italy. They've scored seven tries, six tries, five tries, six tries, seven tries, eight tries last year. Um, not to get a bonus point tomorrow it would be a major shock, wouldn't it? Well, we don't really look back. I mean, it's very much about looking forward, and particularly with, um, you know, the, uh, the, the, the opportunity we've got with some of our younger players coming in as well. Such a diversity in our squad. 
um, which is a wonderful opportunity for them to take their step forward, those younger players as well, and our established players to really grow their development and leadership as well. So it's not about looking backwards. It's very much about looking forward. It's about looking forward to this game. And then after this, we move on. So, But you can't in any way be contemplating missing that bonus point. That, that's an absolute minimum requirement tomorrow. Like I said, the key thing for us is to go for those first 20 minutes setting the tone. How do we set the tone? Really establish the game we want to do. And then if we get our game plan in place, um, we're confident we can go out and put in a really great performance. And there's some really exciting young players, I think, we've got in our team and some established older ones. Um, so we get that tone right, we'll create some great opportunities for us. Hi, Simon. Um, we spoke earlier about um, the different methods you're bringing in to kind of encourage getting on the edge with Johnny May and Anthony Watson out wide two obvious threats for you. You've always had Farrell and Ford there working together. Now you don't have Ford. How important is Henry Slade going to be in that role to make sure you're getting the ball out wide and able to use your attacking threats? Well, it's, I mean, Henry Slade's obviously very important, as is Jamie Joseph, as is so many of our players. I mean, it's understanding how we want to get the ball out wide, uh, if that is where we want to get it, and how we can actually really impose ourselves on the game and Henry's been excellent uh, with, um, with his club over the last few, uh, few months. He's in a really good vein of form at the moment. So we're looking forward to seeing him transfer that form and that way of playing and that confidence uh, into the England style. It's a really uh, lovely blend between him, at, uh, Owen at 10, him at um, 12, uh, Henry, and JJ at 13. So really excited to see in particular how that combination work. And is that something we could see interchange during the game? Can, can Henry slot in at 10 and Owen to 12, given Owen's experience there? Yeah, it could, could definitely be. And the more adaptable you can be as a team, of course, then you know, the more challenging it becomes, therefore, for the defence. They've got to solve the problems. Um, they're obviously, the more adaptable can, can create complications. So we still got to be really simple and clear about how we want to play the game. But yeah, there's definitely opportunities there for us. Uh, hi, Simon. Um, Eddie spoke yesterday about uh, the responsibility of the players. Um, uh, the responsibility is to put a smile on people's faces to make people happy in a period of hard time. I just wondered to what extent that's sort of been discussed uh, and it, how we, to what extent you would hope we would see that on, on, from what we see on the pitch tomorrow. Oh, definitely. I mean, everyone's well aware of the, the responsibility they have. Um, that's all players and all staff here at England, what the responsibility we have representing our country and how gr grateful we are for that opportunity. Um, and it's very important that we go out and we, uh, we apply ourselves to the best we possibly can. And for England, that's first and foremost about winning games. Um, so that's a really important focus for us to make people smile because of our success. Um, and also evolving the way we play the game as well as we continue on our, on our journey. So, yeah, uh, winning games, uh, the responsibility we have in terms of um, representing our country and representing the RFU, very, very important, um, uh, all to make people smile. Thank you. Any further questions? Uh, yeah, please. Um, Simon, I'm just looking at um, Italy. Do you expect them to use Cannon more as a playmaker? Because asking him to truck it up into that Irish back row or midfield didn't really seem to fit his skills profile last week. Ah. Uh, you may very well be right, but one thing we're, we're, we're clear on is we can't uh, predict everything that's going to happen in this game. We know that Italy have um, uh, an, an innovative team that will come up with different ways of trying to break us down, both in attack and defence. So we've got to prepare for all occasions, uh, all scenarios, if you like. Uh, so that's definitely something we're mindful of, but we're also mindful of you know, a number of attacking players they have in their team that can really to break the game up. Uh, so big challenge for us. And talking to the women's team yesterday, they were saying that they're not allowed out of the hotel. I, I presume it's the same with you. Have you therefore had to put something in place to stop the players getting restless around the hotel while you wait for that tea time kickoff? Uh, we've got a wonderful setup here. Um, it's, a, it's a really lovely hotel. Uh, we are in the bubble as well, just like the, uh, the women's team. Um, but the players have been responding really well to this back of the Lensbury as well. They understand their... Uh, the COVID guidelines, the importance of this. And like, again, it comes back again to that responsibility, you know, what we need to do to create the best environment possible for us then to go and perform to our best to then make uh, the national, uh, the nation proud and smile. Thank you. Okay, so thanks everyone. I think we're oh, gathering one, you've got one more, we'll just put that in and then we'll get a bit of a break.
Sorry, Catherine, just, just one last one, Simon. Um, just, I don't know whether a decision has been made about how the team will respond in terms of, um, you know, the Black Lives Matter issue, whether it's been a decision to take collectively or what you'll do yourself. I uh, know that's an individual decision the players will make, but they've discussed it um, uh, within the, uh, amongst themselves as a group. It's been a very important matter for them. Um, and that's, there's been some really strong, good conversations there. Um, but yeah, that'll be an individual decision. Everyone, we'll, um, we'll leave it there. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.